Ah, yes, here they are, the famous Faber-Castell polychromos. What's up guys, it's Ray here, welcome back to my channel, and in today's video I'm going to be doing my, I guess, review on Faber-Castell polychromos. Now, if you're not familiar with what these are, these are basically the next level Prismacolor. Imagine Crayola colored pencils, but on steroids. I don't know how these are going to work out, I don't know if they're going to be good or not, so I started off with the smallest pack they have, which is the 12 pack, and I got them for $22.50 with free shipping off, of course, Amazon. If you're curious and you want to try them out yourself, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Anyway, let's open this up and see what we're dealing with. I've never seen a pamphlet inside of a pencil case before, that's fancy AF. So these are the colors that we get, all 12, and I couldn't have asked for a better selection. At first I noticed that all the colors were bright compared to a Prismacolor. Uh, later we'll find out why they do that. So before we start the drawing really quick, I want to show you guys the claims from the actual website. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you which one of these are true and which ones not so much. Alright, cool, let's get this show on the road. Today I'll be drawing a skull, kind of like what I did with my last video in the 100 year old colored pencil video. Except this version, I'm gonna take it a bit more, I guess, serious. So literally the very first second that I picked it up, I noticed like how heavy and big it is. But for real, look how big the polychromos is compared to the Prismacolor. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it is a very visible difference and it just feels bigger in my hand. So yeah, that's a plus in my book, because now there's a lot of protection for the pencil not to break. Of course, I picked the coolest color to start with, which is that really awesome yellow green, but it's actually like a neon green. It's so awesome! And I was surprised with how pigmented they are, because it's really hard to get a pigment like that that saturated. And then, I try to blend and layer. So this was my first issue with the pencils. These are oil-based as opposed to the traditional wax-based, so I was expecting these to just glide, but apparently not so much. So these are actually really, really tricky to blend. My first thought is how would a beginner know where to even begin, because you have to do a lot of extra steps to get these to blend well. I have videos all about how to blend colored pencils, but these ones are really different because they're so dry and different in texture. And of course there are like thousands of different chemicals that you can put on there, but I I don't know, I guess I just expected these to just blend together like Prismacolors do, you know what I mean? Oh, I gotta start the next episode of Death Note. After watching the uh, live action re Netflix remake, I had to rewatch the anime again. But anyway, back to business. Once I figure out a way to perfect blending these in a simple way that anybody can do. I will make a video about it, but right now I'm just testing these out. So I'm drawing, you know, I start off with a light blue and sadly there's no dark blue so I'm starting off with a very light color. And then I press down really hard and holy crap look at that pigment. I am shooketh. It's literally laying down like a whole nother color. Like it's not just light blue anymore, it is a very, very deep blue. Check this out! So we start off with a nice light wash of blue, and then instantly it's a dark deep blue. That is insane! I have never experienced that in a color pencil before, that is awesome! So basically what this means is that you can get so much more of a color range out of a smaller smaller, smaller amount of pencils. And if you were to get the 120 pack or whatever, you would have so many colors. Like, it's almost to the point where I don't think you would need 120. So, in a way, that high price point evens out because you're getting a really large array of colors with such a small amount of pencils. Ah, that is so cool! Favorite Castell, I know you're not watching, but Please sponsor me. Nah, I'm totally kidding. But notice I'm starting to work on the bottom area of the skull and I'm starting to use different colors. Well, I noticed something really, really weird when I started to blend. 
Okay, so look at the rough texture here. Versus this insanely smooth texture here. And remember, I blended consistently the same way throughout the whole entire drawing. So what that means is the formula is not consistent with every single pencil. Uh-oh. But whatever, let's just trek on. These pencils are really hard, and that's really awesome because they don't break every five seconds like um, <coughs> somebody else we know. You can sharpen these to a very, very fine point, and oh, it doesn't break. And all there is left to do now is just add in some fine details, and we're done. So, does it have unsurpassed pigments? Yes, the pigments are amazing. Does it have break resistant tips? Yes, they are designed that way. Is it waterproof? Yes, not smudge. Yes, color matched to all other Faber Castell products. I don't know, because I don't have any more. So, who are these made for? They're made for professional artists. So, if you're a beginner and you don't really know what's going on yet, I wouldn't suggest these. These probably are not going to be for you. But if you have been doing art for a while, you know what's up. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I'm going to give these an A minus because there are some flaws, but the good things are incredible. Anyway, guys, if you want to see more of my old and new artwork, you can find my Instagram here. And for behind the scenes stuff, you can find my Snapchat and Twitter here. And of course, there's like a thousand links to everything else in the description box below. And with that being said, I love you guys, and I will see you next video.